In this tutorial, you will be shown how to set up the KeyNap system for the first time. The first step will be to go to our website at start.qnap.com. You're going to go ahead and select the model of your NAS. Now, after you select your model, what the web page will do is that it will give you three different categories, which are steps, to go about setting it up. Now the first category is the hardware. It's going to tell you how to go about and install the hard drive into the NAS. Now, if you want to set up your NAS, you will need to at least install one hard drive into your system. Now we do have a separate tutorial on that, so you can go and reference that uh, after this video. Now in this section, it's install firmware. You have the cloud installation option and the local installation option. Uh, if you have the QNAP Cloud ID sticker on the side of your NAS, then we would recommend that you go with the cloud installation. The reason being is that it's designed to be easy and designed to set it up uh, quickly without having to log into the NAS. Now, for whatever reason, uh, you don't have internet. Uh, say the NAS doesn't have access to the internet, the computer doesn't, then you would go about using the local installation. Cloud does require internet. And in this section, we'll go ahead and show you how to set up using both methods. So we're gonna start with the cloud installation. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And we're gonna find the cloud key. That's gonna be the number that's on the sticker that's on the side of the NAS. If it has it, if you don't have a sticker, then obviously you skip this part. You just go to local installation. So we're gonna start the cloud installation. We're going to take that number that we got from the sticker and we're going to place that in this box right here. And once you've entered all the numbers, just go ahead and hit the enter button. In this section, the QNAP will prompt you to either sign in or register in my QNAP Cloud account. Now, if this is the first time that you're installing the NAS system, you're going to sign up. Uh, make sure to use your private email address because you will need to validate that account. If you, if you do have an existing account, and just go ahead and enter your email and password that you've used to set up your other NAS systems before. Now in this last section, all you really need to do is hit the start button. What it's going to do is allow the NAS to go out over the internet and download the firmware file and install it for you. Now this section will deal with the local installation of the NAS. It does not require internet nor the uh, cloud key. You will need the QFinder utility. Now it's available for the Windows, for the Mac, and also Linux, and uh, also Chromebook. Uh, you will need to go to our website at keynap.com and go to the download section and utilities to get that link for the Chromebook. As far as the application, just uh, download the appropriate one for your operating system and install it. What the QFinder application is going to do is it's going to scan your local network to try and identify the NAS. Now, if it doesn't see it for whatever reason, you might want to check the security settings on your computer or check to make sure that your computer is on the same subnet uh, that the router is on. Now, once you, you find your NAS system, you're going to go ahead and select it and run the, uh, the wizard. The, one of the first things you're going to be asked is to update the firmware. Now, this usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes in order to perform. So I'll just go ahead and leave it from here and allow it to, uh, to finish. Now this is a section where you actually start configuring your NAS system. So to go about getting it started, just go ahead and select the Start Smart Configuration Guide. Now this is where you can name your NAS and also change the default password of the admin account. Now by default, it's admin, admin. In this next section, just go ahead and put in your time zone and uh, pick next. Now this is where you configure the network settings of the NAS. Now you can either leave it on DHCP, in which it will automatically grab an IP from the router, which is what it's doing right now. Or if you know exactly what IP address that you want to give the NAS system, you'll go ahead and you'll set static, and then enter all the information there.
this section will tell you which services you'd like enabled or disabled. Um, to avoid any possible issues after the NAS has been installed, I'd recommend just leaving everything checked as is. And then once you find that you don't need a certain service, then you can go about and disable that after. This is where you set up the RAID configuration on your NAS system. Um, depending on how many hard drives are detected on your NAS is what RAID level you can essentially uh, create. So for example, if you want to RAID 1, you need at least two drives. And once you've selected those two hard drives, then you'll be able to choose that RAID type. There are other options as well, such as encrypting uh, your volume and also doing bad block scan. If these are brand new hard drives, you do not need to do a bad block scan. That should be fine. Um, if you want to encrypt your drive to where your volume needs uh, a password in order for it to become accessible, that's where you can set that as well. In this last page, it'll summarize everything that you configured the NAS for. Now, if you made a mistake, you can always go back and correct those errors. Now, once you confirm all of your settings, if everything looks good to you, then the uh, settings will now start to be applied to the NAS. Now, this process usually takes about 20 minutes to complete. Uh, this section is sped up uh, for the sake of the video, but uh, just go ahead and set aside about 20, 25 minutes uh, for it to finish. Once the settings have been applied to the NAS, you'll be told that the installation is complete, in which when you hit connect and log in QTS, what will happen is your web browser will be opened up for you and the IP address of the NAS will then be entered. After you'll log in with the admin account, uh, by default it's admin admin, but if you change it to something else, just go ahead and enter that password that you set it up as. Once you log into your NAS for the first time, it'll greet you with a welcome screen, which will introduce you to the NAS and its capabilities. So after that, your NAS is now ready to go. Thank you for watching this tutorial on setting up your NAS for the first time. The following suggested videos are meant to assist you in transferring files from your computer onto the NAS itself.